Welcome to Daedalus U. I'm Paul, coming to you from Brooklyn. Today we're going to take a look at graphing cosine curves with transformations. We're going to look at a question from our favorite pre-calculus textbook, Advanced Mathematics by old Richard G. Brown. Open up to page 313. We're going to look at number 13. I've already got the question up on the big board. The equation is y minus 3 equals 2 cosine pi over 2 times quantity x minus 1. The question is what does this curve look like? The first step is to move this 3 currently on the left hand side of the equation over to the right. We have to solve for y in order to get the equation into the form with which we are familiar. There's a particular form that enables us to essentially see the transformations relatively easily. That form is y equals capital A, now this is just represents a constant, times the cosine of capital B, times the quantity of x minus c, plus d. These constants represented in the equations by capital A, B, C, and D represent particular transformations. The amplitude is represented by A. The amplitude tells us how high up and how far down we go from our center. B is the period shift, in many ways the most interesting or complex shift. The normal period for a cosine curve is 2 pi. Period is represented by capital T. Now to solve for the period of this particular curve, or any cosine curve for that matter, we take the normal period 2 pi and we divide by this coefficient b. That will tell us the particular period for this curve. C is called the phase shift, or the x shift simply. The key to remember with the C shift or the X shift is that it's counterintuitive. If it says minus, in this case 1, we're going to shift 1 to the right. And we'll talk more about that later. But the C shift is a left or right shift, whereas this D is the Y shift. So in other words, uh, an up or down shift. And these shift the entire graph up or down. So, first step is to draw our axes. It is crucial when graphing trigonometric functions, or any functions, or curves for that matter, to have a good graph with a good scale in the x direction and the y direction. So here we're going to go out to 5 in the x direction, and you'll see why that works well for us when we take a look at the period. We're going to go up to 5 in the y direction, and again you'll see why that works well for us given our y shift of up 3 and our amplitude of 2. Now we want to take a look at some of these key coefficients. The amplitude is a good place to start. The amplitude is in this case 2, which means our curve is going to go up 2 and down 2 from the center. It represents kind of the extremes of the graph. The period now is calculated uh, by this very simple formula. We take the normal period for cosine, which is 2 pi, divide it by our coefficient b, which is pi over 2. Pi's cancel out. 2 divided by a half is 4, and so 4 is the period. In other words, 4 units in the x direction. That's how long it will take this cosine curve to manifest. That will be the... Uh, the length, so to speak, of one iteration of this cosine curve. Now let's think about the D. The D says plus 3. Well, that shifts the whole thing up 3. So we're going to put a dotted line at D to kind of represent the center, so to speak, of our cosine curve. And then let's think a little bit about the C. The C in this case is 1, and in the form that's minus 1. So that means that even though it looks like x minus 1, because in the form there's a negative sign, we're actually going to shift one to the right. In a lot of ways, I, 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 I like to describe the x-shift as counterintuitive. So, the cosine curve we know starts at the top. So, we're going to go up 3 because of the d-shift, and then we're going to jump to the top of our amplitude. So, at x equals 1, we're going to put a point at y equals 5. 
Again, that's shifted one to the right, and then up three for the D shift, and, and, and then jumping up two because of the amplitude. Now, our next point is going to go at two because, because the period is four, and because cosine curves come in kind of quarters, our next point will go down to the center. So we have a point at two, comma three. Halfway through our graph will be at the bottom point, so we have a point at three, comma one. Three quarters of the way through our graph will be back to the center, heading back to home, so at four, comma three. And then we wind up where we started, which is what cosine curves do. So we'll put a point up here at five in the x direction and five in the y direction. Once you have the points plotted, the challenge is to draw a nice, easy cosine curve. I'm getting the hang of it here myself. We go down like a bell, we come up, curve back through our center, and of course the curve keeps going, so let's curve back down and put a little arrowhead here on the curve to indicate that this will go on. And while we're at it, may as well indicate that the curve continues uh, infinitely in, in, uh, to the left. We'll put a little arrowhead. In fact, while we're at it, why don't we just extend this and show that the, the curve will go through the y-axis there, right at 3. And there you have it. This is the graph of y equals 2 cosine pi over 2 times quantity x minus 1 plus 3. Notice that all four transformations are employed. When you have all four, it gets a little complicated. You can pause it and take a look. But that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you in the future.